Hello, this is Jean Lenz, and this is my executive summary on math portfolio. My research questions were how math portfolios work and how could they give me insights into my students' motivation for learning mathematics. Specifically, what is the difference between a folder of a student's work and a portfolio? Can a portfolio of a limited number of pieces accurately reflect student growth over time in mathematics? Should a student receive a grade for a portfolio? If portfolios are graded, isn't that the same as double grading? If we use writing as a portion, portion of math problem solving, where an English language learner who is skilled in math but poor at the English language be penalized? Finally, this is most important question to me, and it is, is there a direct correlation between math portfolio and standardized math test scores? This topic is an important topic for me for several reasons. One is because I've collected students' work in the past but never tried to build a math portfolio because I was not familiar with this assessment. It was more of a collection of students' work. I've heard many successful testimonies of other subjects' portfolios as a way for teachers to look into students' thinking and for students to self-reflect. Another reason for choosing this topic is that I've noticed that a lot of my students do not have organizational skills. I want them to learn to keep their work in order according to dates and revisit them often, self-assess or self-reflect. I believe that students can learn from an era more than from a lecture, but wanted to find out if portfolio would help students to form a habit of self-evaluating errors and learning from them. Finally, this topic made me wonder if there is a direct correlation between portfolio and improvement in standardized math test scores. Should math portfolio be used in every grade math class? I've looked at a few qualitative and quantitative research articles on math portfolio, and here are what I found to my research questions. First, a math portfolio is a collection of a student math work selected to serve a particular purpose, such as the documentation of student growth in math. Math portfolio can also reflect student growth over time in mathematics, and it also provides evidence of areas of achievement and success for the learner, the teacher, and the parent. Implementing the portfolio as a new form of assessment enables me as, as the teacher to develop a comprehensive profile of each student's progress and the growth in mathematical ideas. Monitoring the acquisition of skills and the concepts and the ability to combine them with the individual's interests and the perspective offers a most effective way to provide feedback to the teacher about the student's understanding of the content. Jean Stenmark gives many ideas on constructing a good math portfolio, including the importance of putting dates on all pages of the papers because the use of portfolios places an emphasis on documentation. Obvious advantages of math portfolio are providing evidence of performance beyond the factual knowledge that has been gained, assessment records that reflect the emphasis of a good mathematics program, and a permanent and long-term record of a student's progress reflecting the lifelong nature of learning. 
There is no definite argument on grading man's portfolio as a formative or summative assessment, and none of them suggests that there is direct correlation between man's portfolio and the standardized test scores. However, Saylor and Overton suggest that the, implement, imp, the implementation of portfolios sends the message to students that their first efforts should not be their last. Revision is part of impo, improvement, and students are expected to reevaluate so that their portfolios represent their best work. There is very little information on how math portfolio benefit or not benefit English language learners. What I found interesting is that regardless of many obvious advantages of math portfolio, there is no direct correlation between math portfolio and standardized test scores. Researchers suggest that math portfolio is an effective self-assessment and self-reflection tool, and students can learn from errors effectively. Teachers can also gain insights into students' learning, but none of these benefits suggests that there is a correlation between math portfolio and standardized test scores. I believe that math portfolio can benefit English language learners in formulating their thoughts in writing, but I don't think it's fair to give the same rubric to English language learners for grading math portfolio. If the same rubric is applied, then English language component should not be included in the rubric. But then a big part of portfolio is documentation which requires writing, so will the rubric of portfolio be valid without the writing component? English language learners may have very good math skills, but low English language skills. I will continue doing my research on this question and include my findings in my final paper. There are many articles on culturally responsive teaching or on education for English language learners, but little findings on implementation of math portfolios in English language learners' classroom. My questions are, what if an English language learner is very good at math skills, but has low English language skills? and cannot document his or her work in English well enough in the portfolio. How do you grade his or her math portfolio then? Another question is that won't math portfolio documentation be helpful to English language learners because of the practice in organizing thoughts in English and writing them down in English? I'm not sure about the answers to these questions and I plan to do more research on these questions. I found Jean Stenmark's article on math portfolios a new form of assessment interesting because she talks about a lot of excellent ideas on how to construct a good math portfolio. Stenmark suggests that asking good questions is critical in building constructive portfolio as assessment. She lists 11 categories of questions we could formulate, and I will explain a few of them here. For example, problem comprehension. Can students understand, define, formulate, or explain the problem or task? Can they cope with poorly defined problems? For instance, what is this problem about? What can you tell me about it? Next is examining results. Do they connect the ideas to other similar problems or to the real world? For instance, what made you think that was what you should do? Is there a real life situation where this could be used? Finally, um, self-assessment. Do students evaluate their own processing actions and the progress? 
For instance, what do you need to do next? What are your strengths and uh, weaknesses? What have you accomplished? What kind of problems are still difficult for you? The contents in Math Portfolio review the changes and the consistencies of each student's attitudes and thinking processes and provide a basis for discussions between the teacher and the student. So far, I have found this much information, and thanks for listening, and here are the references for my research topic, and I will continue my research for my final paper. Thank you.